How's it going everyone? College Lefty, and in this video, I'm going to play my first ranked game on Hall of Fame difficulty, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, I've kind of taken a little bit of a break from the game. I haven't really played any ranked in about a week, and I have played this game on Hall of Fame difficulty, just not against another opponent. I usually play on Hall of Fame or Legend to warm up a little bit, and in this one, I did not. I tried to hop in to a couple of co-op games, and the people I was matched up with on my team did not really know how to play, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, get into a game of ranked. I might uh, put out a message on Twitter if anybody wants to play co-op, uh, but I wanted to try and get a game in, at least on Hall of Fame difficulty, now that I am in the 700 ratings. And to start it off, we got a foul ball. Chipper Jones made the play, and then uh, we were able to kind of get the next guy out on one pitch. I'm using Madison Bumgarner in this video and I think he's a much better pitcher on the harder difficulties he doesn't really throw hard enough to use on all-star he is pretty good in terms of one of the few left-handed pitchers available um, but the time I used him on all-star kind of got hit around a little bit but to start this game off I missed a couple pitches over the middle of the plate uh, just trying to get the timing windows down trying to get used to the sensitivity on the PCI, it is a little bit more sensitive on Hall of Fame and then much more sensitive on Legend. I know a lot of people are looking into getting uh, one of those pro controllers or one of the enhanced PlayStation 5 controllers that allows you to kind of adjust the sensitivity of your joystick. I think that is pretty good and I'm considering uh, getting one of those myself, but uh, in this particular video and pretty much in all the other videos, I'm just using a regular PS5 controller without control freaks, without anything, and um, I am considering trying to upgrade in that area. Uh, with that being said, I gave up a home run right there. That was a great hit from the opponent. Didn't get that cutter inside on the hands enough. It was a little bit low right where I wanted it, but uh, not inside enough, and he hit it out. Now we have Babe Ruth with two outs. Kind of a slow start here on the offensive side. What a play. He just dove with Mike Trout and caught that ball in midair. I thought that was for sure a double, but now we've, we're facing Mike Trout, and I was able to get the K there on the outside circle changeup, trying to utilize the outside portion of the strike zone as I've been kind of attacking that inside half, especially to right-handed hitters, trying to utilize that cutter, trying to use that uh, sweeping curve as uh, often as possible, but also trying to throw it way below the zone because that pitch, especially to right-handed hitters, if you leave it up in the zone, it will be absolutely launched as uh, Chipper Jones almost did. In his last at-bat, here we're trying to get that circle change up just below the zone and Griffey kind of made me a little nervous there. That was uh, an interesting play. I thought the ball might kind of get over his head on that last one. Here we have kind of a weird swing. Thought it was a pretty good one, but uh, at the same time, I did move the PCI down into the right pretty fast and uh, press the X button at the same time as, as drastically moving it. Haven't really noticed the PCI penalty uh, at all in this game, but I noticed that I was kind of off at the plate. As you can see, I just missed that knuckle curve ball that is uh, definitely over the middle. I just didn't wait back on it long enough. And I've missed that pitch probably five or six times throughout this game so far. He's gone to it when he's ahead in the count, when he's behind in the count. Yeah, I'm really trying to be more selective as this game goes on because really only a one-run game, more of a pitcher's duel. And Fernando Tatis gets a knuckle curve over the middle of the plate. I finally moved the PCI up. Instead of dropping it, I probably should have warmed up a little bit against uh, this opponent or against the CPU to prepare for this opponent. Uh, because I, I just had a slow start with the bats, but we take the lead 2-1, to one, and that's kind of big. I mean, trying to utilize this Madison Bumgarner for at least another inning. I, I don't want to use him for too long because I want to try and go to a pitcher that throws a little bit harder, maybe from the right side, and then go back to a lefty or just uh, see what I can do. But I noticed this opponent was trying to bunt almost every single time with Jazz Chisholm. I know he has a lot of speed. So I brought the infielders in, bunt defense, moved the second baseman all the way in, and uh, he still bunted it right to him, and, I, and it almost worked. I almost messed up the throw. That was kind of a weird play, that last one. Uh, but with that said, we get the next guy, and a lot of people in my recent video asked me why I like Francisco Lindor so much, and uh, that just kind of shows you right there. Only he, he will make that play. I don't really think anybody else Oh, we'll get to that ball. We'll get the good animation to throw out the runner. I know I was in the shift against Matt Chapman. 
Um, but I thought that was a really solid play and a good example of why he's in the lineup. Uh, but we also have Vladimir Guerrero going deep on a perfect. Francisco Lindor also got a base hit in this game to set up Fernando Tatis's two-run shot for me to take the lead. And uh, he just seems to come up big for me. At the bottom of my lineup, I can rely on a switch hitter there who is uh, fast enough to extend you know, an extra base hit into a double or a triple who is uh, a lockdown defender switch hitter with 100 everything the card is just amazing this carlos santana card is also really good i just left that curveball up a little bit too much now we got to face lou gehrig at the top of his lineup i'm going with the splitter and that was a perfect location i think he would have called it a ball i think the umpire uh, would not have ruled that one a strike three called but who knows we got the swing and miss anyway and now kinsuke kondo facing tyler rogers this pitcher is really really good because he throws with such a deceptive motion i was able to get him out of the game and now we're facing alex young with chipper jones and we got extremely lucky right there that was a gifted run that should have probably been a foul ball based on the feedback uh, i don't even know could have definitely been a swing and miss at the same time but anyway we were able to get that extra run of insurance so we have a three-run lead with there Gagne in his second inning of work. We got the first out, which is always the biggest, in the ninth. And thank goodness, because uh, I forgot to bring the fielders in on the bunt defense facing Jazz Chisholm. I was really just not trying to give up a home run, as that does kind of set up a double play. He went ahead and pinch hit for Mike Trout and brought in Munitaka Murakami to get that righty-lefty matchup. I brought in Trevor Hoffman to close this one out just because uh, Eric Gagne was in the yellow for his stamina. I didn't really want to give up an easy home run, and I did anyway because I threw that circle change up. Blowing away just was not outside enough. I wanted it off the plate and uh, just left it over the middle. It was high enough for him to go the other way with it, and then we were able to get the strikeout. We brought in Shohei Otani, the captain version, off the bench as a pinch hitter, uh, but I went with the circle change inside. We got the big strikeout there, and uh, that's really gonna do it for the video. We move up to 740. I was able to get to uh, the 25,000 XP mark and uh, roll one of these boss packs, hopefully. I have pulled three of these so far, and a couple all around the world packs, a couple world baseball classic or charisma choice packs. But mainly, I've gotten these five pack bundles. And this is definitely the worst reward you can get from that because, well, I guess you could pull a diamond out of these. But I haven't had any good luck with uh, five standard packs or any standard packs at all throughout the game cycle. I think I pulled maybe 190 diamond. I've had better luck with the diamond duos packs. And... I would prefer that over uh, a five pack standard pack bundle but uh, let me know what your thoughts are about the xp program and let me know what you think is going to be in this xp re-roll the next time around i think we might see some of those future star packs i might i think we might see uh, some of those all-star game and home run derby packs so those cards might tank in price but the other thing i mentioned or that i noticed and wanted to mention is the fact that uh, my pitcher's stamina got a little bit messed up here. After the game, I paralleled Madison Bumgarner, and then my pitchers didn't regain energy. And Madison Bumgarner, is, it's almost like he never pitched. But I don't really know. That's going to do it for this one. We'll have to see if that happens in the next one. Peace out.